Okay, in this video I'm going to go through the derivation of the formula for the Poisson distribution, which you may recall is that the probability that x is k is e to the minus lambda, it's an ugly lambda, lambda to the k over k factorial. Okay, and that's for positive k. Um, integers k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of a time interval. I'll put my time interval over here because I've got a feeling I'm going to run out of room. And over this time interval, on average, the, uh, there will be a lambda of the events happen. So lambda equals average number of event occurrences. over this time interval, okay, over full time interval. And to analyze this, I'm going to think of having my time interval and cutting it up into a bunch of little sub-intervals. How many? Well, n. I'm going to cut it up into n sub-intervals. So I'll have n, little n, sub-intervals. And as long as those intervals are small enough, then I can approximate my Poisson distribution, where x is a number of occurrences of the event. I can approximate my Poisson distribution, the distribution for x, with a binomial distribution, such that in each one of these little time intervals, um, the event will happen once with probability p and zero times with probability zero, or excuse me, zero times with probability one minus p. And that's an approximation because I'm ignoring the possibility of the event happening twice in the subinterval, but that um, that possibility has negligible probability so long as n is large enough. So what is the probability? of having the event occur in the time interval. Well, overall, we expect there to be lambda events occur on average, and I've cut it into in subintervals. So we would expect lambda over n events to occur in one of those subintervals. And so long as n is large enough, this is going to be a number between 0 and 1. We're going to use that as a probability that an event occurs in that small subinterval. Under my binomial distribution, I have that the probability that x is k is approximately, since we're approximating with the binomial distribution, n choose k, 1 minus lambda over n, that's 1 minus p, to the power of n minus k times p to the k. All right, now from here, I'm just going to work with this expression and get it to my formula for the Poisson distribution. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out our, factorial, um, our factorials for this combination. That's n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. I'm going to leave this term alone. So I have 1 minus lambda over n to the n minus k. And this term, okay, I'm going to split up. I'm going to have this lambda to the k over n to the k. And I see that in the text I actually put this over here. But it, it's multiplied, so it doesn't matter which place it is. Eventually I'll want to sneak it over there. Okay, so now I'm going to expand this out a little more. And my n factorial is n times m minus 1, etc. And I'll eventually get to m minus k plus 1 times m minus k. Right, we decrease by 1 each time, and this is 1 larger than m minus k. And we'll eventually get to 1. And I wrote it that way so that it'll be easy to see what cancels. 
and here I have k factorial, and then I have the n minus k factorial, so I'm going to go ahead and write that out. That's n minus k times n minus k minus 1. You might ask, why didn't I write out that k factorial? Well, it's because it won't cancel, and I don't need to write it out. That won't help me any. It's going to hang around as factorial. Okay, so there's those, and then I'm going to let this sneak over. So we've got a, let's see, a lambda to the k. Down here we have an n to the k. And then we're still left with this 1 minus lambda over n to the n minus k. Okay. Now I'm going to break this up into a bunch of terms after canceling. Now, what will cancel? Well, the n minus k factorial, n minus k all the way down to 1, will cancel on top and bottom. Okay, now how many factors do I have here between n and n minus k plus 1? Okay. Well, it turns out there are k of those factors. Okay. There are k of those factors. So, I can split this up and distribute one of these n's to each of those factors. So I'm going to multiply until I get to n minus k plus 1 over n. Okay, so there's k factors on top, k factors on bottom. Okay. And then, let's see, I've used up this, I've used up this, so what's left? Lambda to the k and k factorial. And remember, those show up in our formula, so those are going to hang around. They're not going to go anywhere. Lambda to the k over k factorial. And then what happens here? Well, I'm going to split this up. And it's 1 minus lambda to the lambda over n to the n times 1 minus lambda over n to the negative k. And each of these factors is going to be um, looked at individually. Okay, so I'm going to need some more room here. Uh, what I'm going to do is erase this line. So I'm going to erase this line. Okay, and that's going to give me room to show what happens here. I'm going to switch to a different color uh, to make things a little bit clearer. Now this obviously converges to 1. It is 1. And again, I'm looking at what happens when I keep cutting up into smaller and smaller time intervals smaller and smaller subintervals of this big time interval. So for a very large n, this is like, say, if n were a million, that's 999,999 over a million. Um, this is converging to 1. And the same thing for all of those terms, so long as k remains fixed. Even if k were 100, you know, if n were a billion, then you'd end up with, uh, let's see, um, 999,999,999. 1,900 all over a billion, which is still close to 1. So all these terms are 1, you multiply, or close to 1, you multiply them together and they become 1 in the limit. The lambda to the k is going to stay lambda to the k, k factorial is going to stay k factorial. Now what's the limit of this as we approach infinity? Well, that is e to the minus lambda. A lot of times e is defined that way. Um, the e is the limit of 1 minus, or excuse me, 1 plus 1 over n the power of n, and then also you'll find that e to the x is 1 plus x over n to the power of n. Take the limit of that as n goes to infinity. Here we have a minus lambda on top. So that goes to e to the minus lambda. Now what happens over here, as n gets very large, this, uh, what's inside the parentheses becomes very close to 1. And if I raise 1 to a power, it pretty much stays the same. So this is still going to say 1. And what we get is lambda to the k, e to the minus lambda over k factorial. Lambda to the k, e to the minus lambda all over k factorial. Now sometimes you'll see these two terms switched. It's, it's uh, one way is not better than the other, and of course multiplication is commutative, so we can switch those around. It doesn't change anything. But this is where that strange formula for the Poisson distribution comes from. It comes straight from the binomial distribution.